Hello, today I'm going to provide a quick uh, unscripted demonstration of the Challenge Runner platform. Uh, I'm going to, in this demo, uh, create a quick walking challenge, but I'll also give some hints as to what else you could do with it along the way. Um, so first things first, let's sign in. And I'm signing in with an administrator account, which will take me automatically to the administrator side. Uh, essentially, there's only two sides to the system, the admin side and the participant side. Uh, so we log in, we log in as an admin, it takes us to the admin side. Uh, if you've never created a challenge before, you would be presented with this page, except that all you would see is this create a new challenge button, makes it nice and easy to decide what to click. So uh, we, uh, we click on that, brings us to this uh, create a new challenge wizard. Um, we have the option to build a challenge from the bottom up or to copy and edit a pre-existing challenge from the database. Um, these are uh, challenges that other admins have allowed us to put in our database. Um, what I'm going to do though is walk through creating one from the bottom up just to give you a better de uh, description of what's going on. So let me hit next. We'll give it a challenge name. Uh, spring challenge spring 2016 okay so we hit next and here's where we give it a description this is available to the users uh, so this is where we would put any kind of details of the challenge any awards that we're going to be giving out um, how often you want data to be entered that kind of thing uh, this is all editable later so I'll just put in nothing and we'll hit next uh, let's see, then we want to decide how we want to display this challenge to our users. A typical challenge is one with leaderboards that have uh, all the participants' first and last names in them. You can also select an anonymous challenge where the participant, when they view the leaderboard, they'll see where they'll see their own name and how that relates in the leaderboard, so where they stand, uh, but everybody else's names will show up as an anonymous ID. The third option is to create an individual challenge where participants will only see how they're doing in relation to a goal. So let's say you created a challenge where you want your participants to lose five pounds or you want them to walk 300,000 steps. Um, so their leaderboard would just see how they're doing in relation to their goal. No other names uh, appear besides their own. Uh, I'm just going to leave it a typical challenge just so that we can kind of see what that looks like, but uh, the others are obviously available. Let's hit next, and this we give a slight discount if you'll allow us to put uh, your templates, not your data, but your, your templates for your challenge in our database. Um, so this is just a test, so I'll hit no, and hit finish. Okay, so now we've created our challenge, which we look at as more or less a wrapper, um, and inside of that challenge we put activities. So here's where the real work gets done. Uh, a little notice says we need to click the add activity button, so let's do that. And the first thing asks, do we want to use uh, fitness trackers? Um, for this, since I'm creating a walking challenge, let's hit yes. These are the current trackers we support. Uh, we are adding to this list, but at this point, uh, these are our trackers. I'll select steps walked and hit next. So it's filled in a few things since, uh, since we selected uh, steps walked. It went ahead and put that in our field caption. Uh, I selected the field type of an integer. We have a few different options we can use as well. Uh, we can uh, set an upper limit, um, which is sometimes good with uh, distance challenges or walking challenges. Uh, inevitably, you have some distance runners in your group, and uh, you know they may log 20 and 30,000 steps a day. Um, after a few weeks, uh, they're so far ahead of everybody else, it kind of demotivates um, if, you're, if you're trying to make this competitive. So you can set an upper limit uh, to allow them to get up to that number of steps a day, every day, but not over that. Um, so we can put something in here. Let me put 20,000 maybe. Okay. Um, a few other options. Uh, you can set a lower limit field, much less common, but it's available. You can also set up a, or select a texting number if you have a participant base um, that uh, may include people that don't have smartphones and may have spotty internet access. Uh, you can allow them to use a texting number, uh, which you would just select, uh, and the once they texted, in this case, their steps to this number. Um, and they would obviously want to do it each day, but they would text their steps to this number, and once the system, and they would have to provide their own uh, cell phone number in the uh, in their profile, 
but once that was done the system would be able to link their account with the uh, the amount that they texted in and it would be able to provide them um, the that amount of steps each day so it's a, it's a handy uh, feature for those who need it um, some uh, some admins may find this useful others maybe not uh, I'll just leave it in there for now and let's hit next um, the next step ask how you want to enter data now the first option is only the challenge admin can enter data that's usually just used if you're doing weigh-ins uh, for a weight loss challenge um, you can also use it for a step challenge if you know everybody has a tracker and you want to make sure that nobody can actually enter in data um, manually but most of the time that's really not a big uh, big problem the uh, the second option says you can allow participants to enter their own data with no date restrictions meaning the last day of the challenge they can enter in data uh, for the last 30 days or however long the challenge uh, lasted that actually causes some problems sometimes for those who pay attention to the leaderboard on the last day of the challenge if somebody who hasn't even shown up on the leaderboard enters data for every day and they win the challenge people get a little bit uh, angry uh, so a better option may be to use the third option which allows you to set the number of days late that somebody can put in data I usually recommend somewhere between three and seven days so let's go ahead and put five days late and we'll hit next Okay, so the, uh, the next step is um, how often we want participants to enter data. Uh, in this case, it's a walking challenge, so we would select daily. The other options are weekly, monthly, usually something like a weight loss challenge, or if you're doing maybe a, uh, a difference in the number of squats or sit-ups or crunches or whatever it is, uh, and you want to uh, check them over time, weekly and monthly are good options. Uh, once is a nice option for things that might be a one-time activity, like say a lunch and learn, um, something of that nature. So let's uh, let's just go ahead and select daily. Hit next. Um, this is one of the I guess if you want to call it complicated pieces of the system, but what this allows you to do is modify or put a multiplier on your data uh, to relate it to the other data that might be in your challenge. For instance, let's say you were running a walking challenge and a weight loss challenge at the same time. Um, somebody walks 10,000 steps a day, great, that's kind of a, a usual, a, a daily goal, um, and the system sees that as 10,000. Uh, somebody also uh, does a weight, they're participating in a weight loss uh, activity at the same time, and they lose 1% of their body weight in a day, which is incredible. Um, but the system only sees that as one. So you've got uh, 10,000 to one and arguably losing 1% of your body weight is every bit as good as walking 10,000 steps. So what can you do with that? Well, if I wanted to take my 10,000 steps and make it worth only one point, I would put a point zero 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 one in this uh, in this field. And what that would do is it would make my every 10,000 steps, the user would get one point. And you can, you can use this to play around with many different uh, aspects of the system. Uh, let's say you put in a, a true and false uh, question. Maybe I consumed eight glasses of water a day, uh, today or I slept eight hours. And you uh, that's a true or false. They either get one point for doing it or zero points if they don't do it. Uh, and you wanted to make that worth more than one point. Instead of point, putting point zero 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 one, uh, you could make it, maybe make that worth a thousand points if they uh, or say they ate their veggies that day so you can like I said you can play with this as much as you want for the purposes of this demo I'll just leave it as default meaning they get one challenge point for each activity point so if they walk 10,000 steps they get 10,000 points uh, let's hit next and this is how for um, uh, leaderboard purposes how the participant data should be evaluated uh, for this it's cumulative meaning one day gets added to the next if we were doing a uh, weight loss uh, competition we would use something like difference uh, percent descending uh, meaning the percentage uh, change from the first entry to the last where a decreasing number is desired um, but let's just leave it at cumulative hit next let's put in a start and end date uh, so it's May of 2016. I'm just going to make it the beginning and ending of 20 or May and hit finish. Okay, so now the system tells us you have a challenge, you have an activity within that challenge. Now you can either build additional challenges and you can really put in as many activities as you want, um, or you can go ahead and start adding participants. Um, since I just said I'm going to do a weight loss, or I'm sorry, walking, I'll just do walking. Uh, click no here and I'm going to add participants 
Okay, so there's a few different options for adding participants. First option and most common is to generate an invitation link um, that you would put in your own emails or newsletters or whatever it is you're going to distribute to your potential participants uh, and they would be able to click on that link and register for the challenge. Uh, other options are to automatically include prior participants. So if you've already run a challenge and you know everybody in that challenge or most of the people in that challenge are going to go to the next challenge, you can just copy them all automatically. They're automatically in there. Uh, third option is to create the individual member accounts one at a time, which is probably the probably the least desirable uh, option here. And the fourth option is if you already know who your participants are, you can create a an Excel spreadsheet file or CSV file. Um, or create the Excel spreadsheet file, go ahead and um, uh, put their uh, email address, first name, last name, and uh, at that point you can save it as a CSV file and bulk upload those, uh, those members to the system. They are, they are then registered. Um, I'll show you this first option because, like I said, it is the most common. And uh, this is the link that gets automatically generated. You can send this out when a user clicks on it. They're taken to Challenge Runner. They create a, uh, an account, uh, quickly create an account, and they're part of the challenge. Uh, if you are using the commercial version and um, you have created a group page, you can also use that where you put your own uh, individual ID here in the first place and your users would be able to go to that group page which should be styled however you like it have your logo um, have this styled group page where they would be able to register for that challenge or any other challenges that you might put up or uh, they can log in from that page so it's kind of a nicer option that's now now available to you um, since I already have a bunch of users and I don't want to create any more uh, let me go ahead and automatically include participants and I'm going to go ahead and put John and Jane Doe and let's grab Bob, Jill, and John. Great names, right? Um, and we'll hit finish. And now you see I have my participants that have been included in this. I can, at this point, if I want, uh, go ahead and create teams as well and move them into teams or let me just click on that. Uh, or I can allow my participants to create their own teams. Um, there's another option to allow the team creators to invite uh, potential uh, team members, which is kind of nice if you want to allow your, your team members to uh, do their own recruiting. Um, then you can also, uh, instead of, by default, all team data is average. This lets a, a team of 20 compete with a team of 5, and um, there's really not much of a problem with that just because all the data is averaged by the number of participants in the team. Um, but then there's quite a few challenges that have roughly the same size teams and they want to see total numbers. Uh, and this allows you to see the total number of team members. I'm sorry, total number, uh, total amount of data that your team members have put in. Uh, you can set the total maximum size. Um, and we'll just leave it at that for now. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm not going to put teams in this, but it's it's an easy option, and uh, that's then how the, uh, the data would show up on the leaderboard as teams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the user view. This is something the admin can do. Uh, so I switched to the user view and uh, this is how your users would see the system if they logged in uh, or when they log in except of course your participants wouldn't have this switch to admin view button and they also wouldn't be allowed to select participants. Um, since we're the admin though we have special powers and let's uh, log in as Jane and uh, let's put some data in here just to make it interesting. Let's say Jane walked uh, 9,000 steps today. Okay, so the system automatically saves uh, Jane's data. And after a few seconds, you see this waiting to refresh. Uh, then the leaderboard refreshes, and we see that Jane Doe has walked or has received 9,000. This is actually total points. We can change the name, do whatever we want with it. Uh, we can also just, uh, if we wanted to, we could have let's say we had more than one activity we could have individual leaderboards for each activity as well and you could also uh, then um, award uh, based on activities as well as total points so uh, just things to think about um, since I guess I should show you this as well when you're starting to look at uh, trackers you uh, you'll need to know that 
because uh, we're a third party to the trackers or they're a third party to us, um, you w each participant who's using a tracker will need to authorize their device. So if we went in and we had a Fitbit, we would need to click on the authorize um, button or link here, and it would take us to the Fitbit site. We would um, enter in our Fitbit ID and password, and this would, uh, and we'd also have a little button that says, will you allow Challenge Runner to collect data for the length of the challenge? They would hit authorize, and from that point on, every 15 minutes we would collect data. Uh, and the rest of them work almost exactly like. Okay, so let's get out of there. Uh, I'll put just a little more data in there to make it look a little better. So let's give John, um, let's give John some data. Uh, so he walked 7,000 steps. And like I said, if, it, if we were using trackers, this data would come in automatically. And, and quite honestly, the participants would never even need to log in except to check their, uh, their data. And also realize that uh, there are uh, Android and iPhone apps available as well, which you can look at. The, uh, the participants would be able to see the, uh, the leaderboard at that point. So um, that is a pretty uh, quick overview. Um, the, the other, I guess I should mention, you also have the ability to change the log date so you can go back in time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I, I think I set it up that we'd be able to go back five days uh, at a time. So if we're, I was logged in as John or Jane Doe, I could then go back five days and enter data for them uh, up to that point. Uh, and that just shows up as a calendar, allows you to select back in time. Uh, over here to the right, uh, this is something that's available. You can think of it as just a wall that uh, your users can post um, more or less anything they want. There's a few different options there as well. So you can allow the, the, uh, the users to uh, type or anything, post anything, or you can set it up where the admin moderates their, their comments. So essentially they can post whatever they want, but the admin has to approve it before it actually shows out up on the general wall. Um, another option is to turn it off completely if you don't want to deal with it, or you can set it up that only the admin can post, uh, make postings on it. And that's nice if you just want to communicate uh, bits of information, uh, how often, whatever, they should be entering data, or when the challenge ends, or just encouragement. So, um, like I said, I wanted to make this a quick overview, and it's not quite quick. I'm about at 17, 18 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. I will probably be revising this every few months because our system uh, is going through uh, lots of growing and revising. So we, uh, we continue to make it better. Um, so like I said, I will probably continue to uh, make these things. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me at jkennedy, uh, the letter J, kennedy at challengerunner.com. Thanks. Bye.